Today I'm going to show you how to tap and place items on a detected plane using AR Foundation. And this works for both horizontal planes and vertical planes. Whee! Yeah, look at my dog! <laughs> And thank you to Unity for sponsoring this video. And so I already have my scene set up, which I have a few videos on already. I'm just using the AR template in Unity Hub, which if you create a new project, you can select the AR template. But these are the basic settings I have right now. So basically, first we need to detect planes, which I did go over in a previous video. But all we want to do is add an AR plane manager where our AR session origin script is located. And then if you want, you can add a plane prefab by going to the hierarchy, right clicking XR, AR default plane. And you can just make that a prefab by dragging that into the project folder, then drag that prefab into the plane prefab. And this is just so you can visualize the planes. I'm personally going to use the plane that comes with the AR template just because it's nicer. And then depending on the detection mode, you can enable only horizontal plane detection, vertical plane detection, or both. In this case, I want to leave all of them checked. Now, after we detect planes, we actually need to cast a ray cast against the plane. And with that, we can use the AR ray cast manager. So this will shoot a ray directly from your camera. In this case, this will be your phone forwards until it hits a plane or an AR trackable object. You can also add a prefab, which is spawned every time the ray is cast. And you can also make AR ray casts persistent, which might be useful in some cases where you just want to have the ray on at all times, which you can do it by calling the add raycast method on the AR raycast manager. All right. And now that we have those two components, we can create a new script. So under my scripts folder, I'm just going to right click and create a new script and you can call that anything. In this case, I'm just going to put place object. You can call it place object on plane. And essentially what we want to do is check if we're tapping on the screen. And if we are tapping on the screen, we want to use the AR Raycast Manager to shoot a ray out from wherever we are tapping into the AR scene. So essentially, it converts our screen touch coordinates into the AR session coordinates and detects whether the ray is intersecting with a trackable object, in this case, the AR plane. So I'm going to be using the new input system for this. So if you don't have that installed, you can just go to Window Package Manager. And under Unity Registry, you can just scroll down until you find Input System and just install that right here and just click Install or you can search it on the top right. And I recommend the new Input System for all new Unity projects personally, which I have several videos on. All right, so first thing we need to do is we need a reference to the prefab that we want to spawn whenever we tap on the screen. In this case, we are going to make a serialized field of a private game object prefab. And it's private because I don't need another script to access it. And serialized field is so we can easily drag it in the inspector. Then we need a reference to a few components. So we need a reference to the AR Raycast Manager, AR Raycast Manager. And so for this, we need to import the using Unity Engine.xr.ar foundation. And we also need to import Unity Engine for later on.xr. Dot AR subsystems. And we're not going to use this using system.collection, so we can just remove this. We also need a reference to our AR plane manager. So just do AR plane manager. And I'm going to remove these two functions and just put an awake for now. Then let's set those components AR raycast manager equals get component AR raycast manager. And let's just duplicate that and replace that with the AR plane manager. And so we're assuming that this script is on the same game object as these two components. So if you want to really make sure, then I recommend adding a require component on top of the class with type of AR Raycast Manager. And you can add a comma after and add another type of AR Plane Manager. So basically this component, once you add it to the game object, if it doesn't have these two components attached, it will create it for you. And basically, it will not let you delete these two components if you have this script attached to that game object, which is good just to make sure so you don't have any null references. All right, now we need to get the user touch input. And for that, with the new input system, there's multiple ways to do it. In this case, for simplicity, I'm going to use the enhanced touch support so we don't have to make an input action asset or an input action, which is just a little extra work. So we can just do it directly in the code. 
And if you're interested in touch for the input system, I do have a video on that link in description. So for this, we can just do using enhanced touch equals. So we're setting a variable up here. Unity engine dot input system dot enhanced touch. And we're doing this so we can just use this enhanced touch instead of having to reference this whole namespace each time we want to use a function or object in it. All right. And now on the on enable function, I'm going to zoom in here. We want to enable the enhanced touch support. If you want to simulate it via the editor, then we need to do enhanced touch dot touch simulation dot enable. So we can actually use the mouse in the editor and it simulates the touch. And then we can do enhanced touch dot enhanced touch support, which for some reason I'm just having a hard time typing dot enable. And so this actually enables the enhanced touch. And then we need to do the on disable. So on disable, and then I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to replace the enable with disable. And so every time we touch on the screen, we want to call a function that casts a ray cast from where we touch onto the scene to detect that plane. And for that, we can do enhanced touch dot touch dot on finger down. So on the finger down, this is an event. So let's subscribe to this and we're going to make a function called finger down and on disable. This script is going to be disabled. We don't want to listen to this event anymore. So let's just put minus equals. And this is just the syntax for subscribing and unsubscribing from an event. So we don't have to keep listening to it, even if we're not doing anything with it. And now we need to make that function. So private void finger down. And we need to take here an enhanced touch dot finger finger. So this takes a finger and from there you can access different properties. For example, if we want to call this function only when one finger is pressed down, we can do a simple if statement here. So if finger dot index does not equal zero then return. So each finger has an index. And if you have two fingers pressed down, one of them will be zero and the other one will be one. So if we have another finger that's being pressed down then we don't want to call this function because we don't want to support that multi touch in this case. All right. And now we can cast the ray cast which we can just do it in this function or you can just make a separate function. I'm just going to do it in this function for simplicity. But for good coding standards, you might want to just make another function to make it more reusable. All right. So if a R raycast manager dot raycast, this is similar to the unity raycast. So we put in the screen position coordinate. In this case, we do finger dot current touch dot screen position. It's pretty simple. Then we have to pass in a list of hit results because this might hit multiple trackables and it will return a list and we can actually reuse this list. So I like to just declare it up here. So private list of AR raycast hit and we can just call this hits and you can just do new list of AR raycast hits. And so this initializes the list. So now we can add stuff to it and we can just scroll down now and pass in that hits list. And finally, the last parameter here is a trackable type, which is basically what we want to detect against. And for that, we can do trackable type and you'll see there's different types of trackables here. In our case, we want the place within the polygon because our plane is essentially a polygon and we just want to check within that polygon. If our screen position is hitting the plane, make sure you have the two parentheses here and I accidentally added a parentheses here. And so you can go into the documentation to view more information on what each trackable type means. So in our case, we are placing within the 2D convex shape associated with the boundary points of the plane. There's also place within bounds. So there is a rectangular bounding box as well that encloses the planes polygon, which would be bigger than the actual plane itself, which is not what we want. And there's some other options here. But in our case, we just want the plane within polygon. And so now we've basically cast a ray cast, which was pretty simple. Now we have to get the hit. So if you only want to get the first hit, you can just do hits at zero. Or if you want, you can also do a for each loop. So for each AR ray cast hit, hit in hits. So for each hit, in the trackable, we want to execute some code. And so here's some of the information. If you put hit dot, you'll see that we have some information regarding the AR raycast hit. 
such as the pose, the distance from the camera, the type of hit. In our case, we can just do dot pose and assign that to a pose. Pose. So many poses. And with this, we can get the position and the orientation of wherever we hit on the plane. And so with that, we can just do game object object equals instantiate. Now we instantiate the prefab. We instantiate it at the pose dot position and with the pose dot rotation. So with the pose dot rotation, it will let us actually instantiate it with the correct normal depending on the wall. So with vertical walls, it'll now have the normal of the game object pointing away from the wall. And so that's essentially all we have to do to detect the plane. All right, and now we can preview if this works. So first we have to add this script to our game object where the managers are, in this case, place object. And then we want to assign it a prefab. In my case, I have a little circle game object that I've made. I've made it into a prefab and it's just letting me know which way is up by putting little circles and which way is forward. Rather simple or spheres, better said. Once we've assigned that, we can press play. I have AR Foundation Remote, so I can preview it in the editor. In your case, you might have to build it if you don't have the asset. And so you'll see now we're previewing it. And yes, I am standing up. So if I click here, you'll see that now it spawns on the plane and it also spawns on the vertical plane and it also spawns on the ceiling. So that was pretty easy. There's two more things I want to cover. What happens if you want to only check a certain plane? In that case, you can do if AR plane manager. So that's why we need the AR plane manager dot get plane. So the hit actually returns an ID, trackable ID. And with that, we can get the plane associated with it. And then we can do dot alignment. So this returns what kind of plane it is. And we can check if the alignment equals plane alignment dot. Then we can do either horizontal down, horizontal up. Horizontal up means the ground floor. Horizontal down is the ceiling. Vertical, none or not axis aligned. In our case, we just want the horizontal up to check if this is the floor. So let's say this is the floor and we want the object to rotate towards us. So it is a little more realistic. With that, we can just get the current position of the object. So vector three position equals object dot transform dot position. Then we get the position of the target that we want it to rotate towards. In our case, that's going to be the vector three camera position equals camera dot main dot transform dot position. And with this, you want to make sure that your camera is marked as the main camera. And to do that, we can just go to the AR camera game object and make sure the tag is set as main camera as so. And so now we do some simple vector math. If we want to rotate an object in the direction of a position, then we do camera position minus position. And so this will return a vector. I like to think of it as a little arrow. So we're going from the position to the camera position, but we have to subtract it. Camera position minus position. We can do vector three direction. So that's the direction we want to face. And now we have to introduce some nice quaternions and Euler angles. So there is an easy way to do this. If you want, you can do quaternion target rotation. So we have the direction. Now we need to do the rotation of the game object. And you can do quaternion dot look rotation and just pass in the direction. And then since we only want to rotate this object on its Y axis, so let's say we have this cylinder here. We only want to rotate on the Y axis as a character would not on the X or the Z because it would just rotate in the wrong direction. Then something simple you can do is set the position dot Y equals to zero and the camera position dot Y equals to zero as well. And then we can just set the object dot transform dot rotation equals to the target rotation. So all we're doing is getting the direction that we want this object to look at and then using this nice unity function quaternion dot look rotation which rotates that object towards a given direction. And then we're just setting the transform rotation of that object to the target rotation. And so if we test this out now, you'll see that my dog is there and we spawn this little guy and you'll see it's facing me. And if we look over here now, now it's starting to shift. And so this is nice. Um, there is another 
another way to do this though, which is a little cleaner. Instead of setting the position Y and camera position Y to zero, we can do this quaternion look rotation. But instead of the target rotation, we can get a vector three. We can get the Euler angles of this. So this is a representation of a rotation in a vector three, which makes it a little easier to conceptualize. And so I'm just going to name this Euler and I might be pronouncing it wrong and that's okay. I've been saying it wrong for two years at this point. It's fine. And then what we can do is scale this vector by the axis that we want to rotate around. This is a very neat little trick. So you can do vector three scale. You pass in the vector. So target rotation Euler, and then you pass in another vector and this multiplies the two vectors together. In our case, we can pass in the object transform up dot normalize. So this will return a vector as so zero, one, zero. And so now this vector will be multiplied element wise. So the target rotation Euler dot X will be multiplied by zero. So that'll be zero. The Y of this will be multiplied by one. So whatever this Y is will remain Y. And then the Z of this will be multiplied by zero. So it will equal zero and what we'll get is a vector three scaled Euler where we only have one value that's non-zero and this is the value and the amount we want to rotate this game object by. And then we can do quaternion target rotation. So we have to convert this back into quaternion. So you do quaternion dot Euler. You just pass in the scaled Euler here. So we also want to take into account the initial rotation and apply this extra rotation to it on the Y axis on this case. So it rotates around the Y axis while keeping in account the initial axes. And with that, we can do object dot transform dot rotation times. You can't add two quaternions together. You have to multiply them the target rotation. So this is a little more convoluted. It's not really necessary in this case, but I thought it would be useful to teach y'all. And with that, you can just do the ceiling plane as well. But the ceiling, you'll have to actually negate it because it'll face away from you. So if we test this out, there's my dog again getting into his bed. And then I put these little guys here. You'll see that now they're still facing me, which is good. And if I point here, they're still facing me. You'll see that it's a little off and that's because the camera position might not be exactly where you are standing as a person because the camera position is on your phone. And we're also only rotating on the Y axis and not on any other axis. So you'll see my phone is pointing directly down. And if I click here, you'll see how it kind of rotates around this point, which is where the center is. All right, so that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. A little coding for this AR mini series, finally. And thank you so much to Unity for sponsoring this video once again. And also thank you to my patrons for all their support. I really appreciate it as usual. Be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next year.